tips for repairing your relationship with your mother. Maybe because you know, if you were to approach somebody whose frontal lobe is really developed, they'll <laughs> they tell will you know no. that you're not the right they'll one. Tell you no. <laughs> Top tip number one: leave the ego at the door. Okay. And so, stop thinking that thirty is suddenly. Oh my God! What will I ever do with my so, life? Uh-uh. Society doesn't just put expectations around milestones. There's also a sequencing in their expectations. Yeah. Hello and welcome to the Two My Sisters podcast. I'm Courtney. And I'm Renee. And we are your online sisters and hosts of the Two My Sisters podcast. We are all about promoting the wellness, growth and development of a community of sisters around the world. And in today's episode, we are going to be having some girl chat Let's while talk. answering your questions pet too. Let's do it. The girls loved the last uh, answer your questions episode that we mm-hmm. did and and the girls are going through it, especially towards the end of the year. Yeah. So we thought we'd do another episode addressing some yeah. of those key life questions from repairing relationships with oh, your parents man. to thinking about love oh. and beyond and everything oh. in between. But before we do that, do we need to clean our house or is our house clean? No. Nah. I hope you guys are winding <laughs> down, you know, just hope that you're enjoying this season. I know Christmas and the Chris- the festive season and like getting close to New Year can be a bit depressing yeah, yeah. for some people. So yeah, just for anyone who may not be having the best of time right now, hopefully these episodes are keeping you company Absolutely. Um, and you can... I hope you find like friends and stuff that you can have good memories with at this time. Yeah. Um, and for those of you who are really looking forward to Christmas, Christmas is soon, Whee! you know? So yeah, just, just hope you guys are resting, that you kind of logged off of work if you can and that you're just kicking it back, relaxing, chillaxing. Chillaxing and all that yeah. good stuff. Guys, I was trying to convince Courtney to wear, you know, our little antlers. You guys already could know you the deal. Please, could you please let us know if you'd Nothing like to you see say. us? Could you please let us know if you'd like to see Whether us they wearing say it, something quite holiday related, they say something Christmassy, if change. you would like to see that, could you just let us know? I'm trying to convince Courtney for that to be part of our, you know, uh, So if they TMS. let us know, what do you think will happen? <laughs> we'll take it from there you know sometimes you've got to take these things at stages at yeah step at a time no worries so once we have a bit more peer pressure yeah. then perhaps i will not be pressured yeah maybe not peer pressure maybe something that the community really desires to see i okay we'll be able I am to facilitate highly financially that. motivated um i too am financially motivated if you get no this is done into npc <laughs> which, which we are not slippery adverse slope to, you started us which we are not adverse to Anyway, guys, if you'd like to see us wearing some holiday related gear, you should let us know. We would love to know, you know, let us know in the comments below. I will come dressed as an angel. That's fine. And that's fine. A biblical one. Uh Oh, (laughs) (laughs) you want to have five eyes all of a sudden? Yes, exactly. God damn. (laughs) Merry Christmas. (laughs) Were you ever in the nativity? I was. In primary school, what? Role did you I've played play? a few things. I've played the narrator for sure. Oh, nice! I know. I have. The, I had that voice allegedly. Um, <laughs> I've been part of the choir. Nice. I've played an angel. Nice. Um, I've played a woman, like just a random woman. <laughs> <laughs> that Not you being woman three. <laughs> woman three <laughs> so yeah I've, I've had a range of roles in my lifetime nice also fun fact i played um peggotty in david copperfield in year six those words mean nothing I know, to me but just so that what you is know. that i couldn't tell you <laughs> <laughs> david copperfield was a great uh what do you call it musical and i had my time to shine you oh, know these nice. plays that they these old english plays that they put on yeah. and then get you to play one nonsense character i remember that and i had to wear like rags because she was poor Oh. Anyways, what did you play in the nativity? Mary. Okay. Yeah. Main character. I was a great or whatever. Mary. Okay. Can't lie to you, in mother of school. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Black Mary. Yes, <laughs> I love it. I'm telling you, my <laughs> husband was white. Interracial. <laughs> Interracial. That's where one of the conspiracy theories like, come from. Mary was black. Yeah, Mary was black. That's why they hated me in primary school. I'm screaming. Um, I played Mary. I've played a wise man. Oh, okay. I played a wise man. Okay. My school was quite progressive. Yeah, I was about to say, not you played a, a wise progressive back. Catholic Crazy. school. Oh my god. Okay. Um, what else have I played? I think I've been the narrator too. Yeah, and then various other. I don't even think I can't remember play, being in that many nativ- nativities though. 
um, I don't know what other plays we've done, mm. but in each play, I've had significant Roles, contributions. So stop it, yeah, 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 each place, yeah, yeah, it's important, yeah, hundred percent. I was in the school band, oh, yeah, but I was so I was meant to play the recorder in the school band, and that was the year I got braces, so I couldn't play anymore. So they, but they didn't let me leave. Not they didn't let me leave, but they were like, oh, you we don't have to leave you. the band. Yeah. So I played the triangle. Stop. Did you? Ting. <laughs> Yeah, and I really tried to convince myself that like each side played a different note and I was like really insecure. So I was like, no, my role is significant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? That's how you need to romanticize your life. I think there's a lesson in there for everybody. A hundred percent. Sometimes you need to make a piano out of your triangle. Mm, mm, And it's mm. all about you really enjoying the moment, the pivotal part that you play in your own life. So I think there's a learning there. I know how to play the cello. I don't think people know that about me. And anytime anyone asks me for a fun fact, I never think of it. You never think of one. Now I actually have one for you as well. So another one for you. I used to play the cello. That's interesting. My sister used to play the violin. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah that's so cool it's giving aristocracy yeah it's giving aris- <laughs> upper class upper class upper class yeah but we had to stop our lessons because of poverty yeah, but- <laughs> you know when they say poverty kills poverty. it killed your talent killed my talent nah, i, I could have been man. a classical babe that is so funny so yeah. you are a serious person do you know when we used to do like music lessons yeah. and like um school, school and stuff i remember my defining moment was learning how to play usher omg on the piano yeah i learned how to play jls <laughs> the club yes. is alive <laughs> <laughs> the music. Oh. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I wrote out all the letters. The letters yes, yeah. I remember. No, do you know how funny that time oh, was? Oh, great times. God bless her. Um, what was her name? What? A music Dijic. teacher. Yeah. She died. I know. I know. R.I.P. She was a great woman. She was harsh. Though. She was very harsh. I was like, how are you policing me? She was playing very, and she was OMG. Eastern European the- as well, guys. Like, no discrimination. How are you? But it was quite scary. Uh, listen, how are you policing me? Playing this song, Usher, OMG. Do you oh, even know the oh, song? Oh, yeah. Oh, she oh, didn't give oh, a damn. Oh, oh, oh. oh, what a good I mean, time. DJ. D- <laughs> <laughs> DJ. <laughs> yeah. Listen. Yeah, DJ. Uh. <laughs> Oh, no, growing up in secondary school in the UK was so great funny, stuff. Man. Great stuff. Okay, guys, we've we've swept our house, shall we? Even just in small, small. But <laughs> whilst we were having fun in uh, primary school mm. and in you know general growth and whatnot, unfortunately, folks have not been having mm. a great time, and yeah. thus we must go over to a ding, ding, ding dilemma. Sorry, that is so funny, <laughs> <laughs> DJ. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> hey, sisters. Hey, sweet. I want to start off by saying that I really love you guys and okay. I'm grateful to have older sisters that are so wise and beautiful. Oh, so kind. I'm 21 and my boyfriend is 24. Okay. We've been together for about seven months now and we both know that we're eventually going to get married. Interesting. We know this because we prayed, fasted, and we're completely sure that it's God's desire. Okay. I say all that to say that I love him so much and he treats me like a queen, exclamation mark. But there are times when it feels as though I'm being fake. It feels as though my love for him isn't really love and I'm just playing games. I know this isn't true, but sometimes I feel this way. I don't know how to bring it up to him because I fear that I might hurt him. Please help your younger sister from Nigeria. Hmm. Don't really know what to say. I, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, hmm. yeah. I think if there is that feeling of this kind of feels fake or forced mm-hmm, mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. doesn't feel real, mm-hmm. there might be some truth to that. Um, I would be curious to know why doesn't it feel real? Right. Why why does it feel fake? Sorry to use your language. Um what does real life real love mean to you? Mm-hmm. How would you feel? Um, and if you know that this is the one for you, what are your hesitations? Do you feel like you are fully being yourself in this relationship? Yeah. Um, do you feel like because you know you felt you're you're both so young and you felt that kind of almost immediate confirmation from God that this is the person that now you feel compelled to have to stay in this relationship Mm. even if there are doubts there Mm. um yeah I I have a lot of questions Mm. I have a lot of questions I think in general I have had people around me kind of say the idea of falling in love kind of seems a bit like a myth yeah um and so sometimes when you are 
in love, you kind of have moments where you question, is this actually love? Yeah, like, yeah oh my gosh, like, what is this? Or maybe your idea of love has been something else that now that you have found yourself in a solid relationship, you Mm -hmm. don't feel maybe a sense of infatuation. Mm -hmm. And so then you're thinking, am I actually in love? Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's hard to maybe talk about your specific situation because there's not necessarily a lot of context to the feelings and the thoughts behind this emotion or this feeling that you have. But I would say more generally, um, Being in love can look like and feel like so many different things, in my opinion. And I think you are the only one who ever really knows whether you are truly in love, whether you're truly being authentic to yourself, whether this relationship is something you really see succeeding. And that's completely fine. Um, And I think only you, like I said, can answer these things for yourself. And so... I get the whole, I don't know if I can bring it up to him because it may hurt his feelings. Mm. Um, and I don't think you necessarily put, need to put it in the way that like, oh, sometimes I feel like I'm in love with you, but then I think that's actually fake. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like that is soul crushing. If someone said that to me, I'd Bro. be like, guys, oh, they love me, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. Oh Going my God. Down the- <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally tear rolling. Um, so I wouldn't put it like that, but like really just think, why am I feeling these things? Mm -hmm. And maybe those feelings are what should be discussed. So, you know, like, oh, sometimes I feel like I, do you feel like we can both be our full selves in this relationship? Mm. What does love mean to you? What does being in love feel like to you? What does it feel like to me? And kind of have those discussions. Um, Mm -hmm. Also, you're both very young. There is still, and you're both very early in your relationship. Seven months is a long amount of time, but it's also not a long amount of time. And so I think it's important to realize there are so many evolutions of your relationship you're going to go through. And I think, especially when you are the sort of person who, you know, has that confirmation of this is the person I'm meant to be married to you kind of think you can skip through the dating phase but I think the dating phase is actually really important nowadays in terms of like cultivating certain habits that you're going to learn about each other and do in your relationship um to actually cultivate and sustain that love and that um, connection and commitment. And so don't, you know, speed past the dating phase Mm -hmm. of really falling in love and staying in love with him because you're like, well, this is my person. Now I kind of have to stick with them. Okay, cool. But still go on that journey of, like I said, growing love in your relationship. Um, And maybe that will be the solution. Maybe you feel as though you have to have like this overwhelming sense of I'm in love with this person. Oh my gosh. Like, because they are my future husband to be, there should be this instant like mm-hmm. I will die for you kind of love and you're feeling that immense amount of pressure and you're maybe you may be thinking why is that not there because it's only been seven months and you're only 21 do you get what I mean yeah so um give it time give it time yeah. talk about you know your relationship with him but I think this yeah the dilemma doesn't have enough details for me personally to be able to do this 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 mm. but I think hopefully that's given you enough to maybe think about mm-hmm. um but also take your time cultivate that love that dating that like for each other that friendship and I think you'll naturally know when you're like no I'm authentically in love with this person um even if it doesn't look like what I thought being in love would look like I can identify within myself I am in love um and that might just take some time for you and that's okay and like you even said I know it's not true but there's something there that's made you send this dilemma Mm. yeah how about you, Renee? I love that. I think that was a very measured response. I agree. It is very difficult to diagnose this one because there isn't a whole heap of context. Yeah. And I think it is worth having that introspection and really understanding what is where are these feelings coming from and why is the word fake the word that you mm. attributed to these emotions, right? I think when we think about love, as you said, we can often think of it as this lovey-dovey infatuation, this like emotional feeling. And then there's love that is the practical love. That's the decision to love someone. It's the decision to carry out with actions, words, and things that will express that you love them. I think it's also important to understand that over the span of, you know, a long-term relationship, you won't always feel like you love the person. Sometimes it is a choice to love the person. And I think what's also great is the fact that you guys are quite in tune with your faith as well you know you've prayed you fasted it it sounds like you have a great relationship with God and I think it would actually be worth exploring that a little bit more your relationship with God because 
from our understanding and from our beliefs, God is love. And mm. the principal ways in which God demonstrates his love to us is through his covenant, mm. right? And love is about covenant. It's about that commitment. Is it that, you know, there's any hesitation or nervousness around mm. that covenant that you're, you know, expecting to have with this person? Is it that you need to take a little bit of a step back to really understand and digest and process yeah. what love means in the context of a relationship? Is it that you need a bit more information as to how you receive love, how he receives love? Um, are you feeling loved? Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of unknowns here that could be potential opportunities for you to dive deeper into understanding love yeah. and understanding love within the context of a romantic relationship that is rooted in God. So beyond, you know, praying and fasting, there's a little bit of deep work that mm. could be done here to really understand what does love look like in this context. And I think completely agree that framing around i just feel fake sometimes yeah, yeah child no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> that man will cry and leave Ooh, child <laughs> wrap that up so i think <laughs> it would be worth doing that kind of internal work uh, doing a little bit more work to unearth exactly what you feel and giving it language before expressing it to him because it might end up being a journey that both of you do take in terms of understanding how to love each other properly mm -hmm. love each other well um but it is necessary for you to unearth that first just so that it doesn't land badly mm -hmm. um but sis you are very very young you're both very very young and mm -hmm. it's beautiful that you guys are already super intentional you're already taking steps to move forward and really solidify this relationship mm -hmm. and that's beautiful we are praying for you guys we hope that it works out but equally you have some you can take your time with this mm. one too especially because there are some unknowns within yourself that you might need to uh, you know unearth deal with give language to before you proceed any further mm. especially if there's a feeling of like a inauthenticity there mm. there's something that needs to be uprooted there so sis i we hope that does give you some you know food for thought things to think about mm -hmm. consider do come back to us as well give us some updates if there's anything that you know you would like to share a bit further remember this is confidential we ain't gonna yeah, share man. nothing about your business that you don't want us to share um that would be helpful but this definitely requires a little bit more introspection, a little bit more unearthing mm. and a little bit more journeying both by yourself with God, but also with your partner. Yeah. Um, but we're sending lots of love. We are praying for that relationship. You guys, oh, we love young love. We really do. And yo, sisters listening in, does this ring a bell to you? Is there anything that you can share? Are there any thoughts that are percolating in the sister sphere? that you might want to give language to that sis hasn't please 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 drop it like it's hot in the comment section below here on youtube yeah. but also on spotify i see the sisters are dropping comments on spotify we they love are, it we love are. it but yeah sending lots of love sis and whilst that was one dilemma that was answered we have a whole host of questions to answer Ooh. today it's really giving you know question and answer with the sisters and our thoughts on a whole variety of different things mm -hmm. some of them are taken from the live show mm -hmm. but some of them are actually questions that we've had um over the course of like our social media all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. so starting in pretty heavy mm -hmm. which is oh one second where was the question i wanted to start with yeah starting in a little bit heavy mm. which is top tips for repairing your relationship with your mother oh yeah, really yeah, really yeah. good Woo. one sometimes distance mm. if there's like a lot of hurt a lot of memories um and things are just extremely toxic as in every time there is an attempt to have any kind of conversation it results in conflict mm -hmm. you need distance yeah um if this is possible i don't know how old you are um what your financial status is but if it is possible get some distance yeah um and, and the next thing would be being honest about your um being honest about your feelings whilst also being honoring and respectful yeah and i know this one can be really tough because we think no you honor is earned right yeah, you yeah. you give honor where honor is due but i think there is a certain level of respect we sometimes need to give our parents for them to not completely shut down mm -hmm. when we are having a conversation <laughs> with them and it's very annoying because it's like no you hurt me you are very much in the wrong but the same way you we're saying with um in the last dilemma for example yeah. if you go to your boyfriend you say sometimes i feel like my love for you is fake it's gonna shut down everything yeah. before you really unpack the whole conversation that could actually be more valid yeah and so 
clearly there's a lot of work that needs to be done there. If your parent is in the wrong or there just seems to be a lot of bad things that you want to go over and change that you want to see from it, don't shut down that conversation by coming in with what could be perceived as disrespect. Mm -hmm. Whilst you may not intend for it to be disrespectful because you are very hurt, Mm -hmm. sometimes in our hurt, we do things which other people perceive as disrespect, especially our parents. And so I think it's important to like kind of, I know it's annoying, but simmer down the ego a little bit, sometimes bring down the theatrics Mm. and just be like, you know what, mom, really needs to talk to you about something. Um, When you did this, 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 it really hurt me in this way um, because it made me feel like this. And I think getting to that root of, especially firstly, like caveat to this is ascertain is your parent actually a good person because some people never want to find resolution right right, like unfortunately there are a lot of parents though even though they are mature in age they're emotionally immature right and so it's important to think does this person ever even like to bring resolution to any situation that happens to them in life in general outside of my relationship how are they like in their friendships how are they Mm -hmm, like with their mm -hmm, siblings mm -hmm. how are they like with their partner how are they like to everybody else Mm -hmm. does this person actually want to grow and develop as a person or are they stuck in their ways because sometimes if somebody is stuck in their ways there is no point yeah there is no point hashing out these issues go on a journey of forgiveness and releasing bitterness by yourself do you know what i mean and forget about engaging in this relationship there are a lot of people who've grown up and cut their parents off as much as it's painful sometimes it's necessary because you know there will never be any resolve pray for them for a from afar love them from afar, minimize contact, live your life. And, you know, just remember that you have parents and they've brought you to where they could. Mm -hmm. And so, um, that's the, that's the context to all of this. But if they are somebody who is like, actually, mom, you, you are someone who's a bit measured or you are someone who in the past I've actually seen apologize or somebody who, has expressed in some way, I actually do want to be close to you. Cause you know how sometimes our parents get old and they realize the foolishness in their oh, ways. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, oh, I, I want us to be closer. And it's like, you're the reason we're not close. And it's just like, okay, if there's an openness to repair yeah. um, things, kind of realize that one, this is going to be a very long journey. Mm-hmm. People do not change over time, especially mm-hmm. old people, um, overnight, sorry, especially old people. People who are, have practiced their ways for decades. Oh God. And only just seen the error now. And error, error now, but mm. also people who maybe have been hurt over a long period of yeah, time yeah. and they've taken that out on you or that it's affected your relationship or their yeah. approach to relationships ah these things do not change overnight and so give your mom a chance mm-hmm. Give your mom a chance and know that there may be many times in this journey where she may fail. She may return back to her old ways. She may shout. She may be rude. She yeah. may be dismissive. She may invalidate. She might gaslight. Um, and if that happens, take yourself out of the situation and, you know, mend and heal and do all of that in your own time to the extent that you can on your own before you reapproach another conversation. In all transparency, I had to go through a very big um, journey of repairing my relationship with my mom. And there were many conversations which ended with, okay, you're saying I hurt you in this way. I didn't do that. And it's like, yes, you did. I have the memories. I do. But okay, I'm just going to cry. <laughs> I'm going to say I'm not going to talk to you for a bit. And then we're going to revisit it. Mm. And it took years of my mom going on her own journey and I going on my own journey before we could even come together and be like "Mm, there's some work we can do here and we need to do here and both of us need to be invested in that Mm -hmm. and now you know my mom and is doing very well to kind of make those steps um and so am i and it has meant i'll talk about my side because obviously her side is whatever my mom comes on the podcast hey mommy rose auntie rose the girls want to hear from you honestly and whenever she comes on the podcast she'll tell her side but my side was i had to release the unforgiveness and the pain. Mm. And it's not to say it didn't exist. Mm. And it's not to say that even till now I can think about some stuff that has happened between us from childhood to now, and I'll get very upset. Mm. However, I know that if I want our relationship to be anything, if I want my mom to have a relationship with her grandkids, if I want my mom to be in my life, if I want to see my mom grow into old age, Mm. I can't keep holding her past sins against her. I can't, like it will just naturally put up a barrier between us called resentment, called bitterness, which will stop us completely. Even if she's willing to change, that will stop us from having a healthy relationship. So if you want reparation and she is willing and she is open to go on that journey, realize on your part, it's going to take a lot of patience. Mm. It's going to take a lot of observing her behavior. It's probably going to take the rehashing of a lot of issues, constant conversation and constantly 
pulling her up on mom remember i told you i don't like when you speak to me like that mm. or remember i told you i don't like when you do that and her being like mm. but this is how i am like, i understand that but this is how it's going to affect our relationship yeah and that's going to happen multiple 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 times yeah and you just have to pray that she'll be responsive. Sometimes the the change that we want to see in our relationship is the change we want to see in our parents mm-hmm. as people, mm-hmm. right? You need to become more understanding. You need to become more tender. You need to become less harsh. That takes time. So be willing to go on that journey. Have compassion, have empathy, yeah. um, have patience, but also protect yourself with boundaries, mm protect yourself with i'm gonna remove myself from this conversation protect yourself with some distance if need be yeah um yeah that's what i'd say how about you yeah no, i absolutely love everything that you're saying i think it does require the removal of ego yeah i think whenever you want to repair any kind of relationship you have <coughs> sorry you're good you always have to drop your ego yeah. you have to leave it at the door because there will be some things on earth that you can hang on to there will be some things that you know they will point out to you that will hurt you yeah. but in the process of restoration and you know healing you will have to leave your ego at the door. So that's definitely top tip number one, leave the ego at the door. I think I love what you were saying around like delivery. I think trying to go in with love and empathy and understanding is really important. I think our parents, because they have seen themselves in relation to you as a parent for Mm -hmm. so long, it can be very difficult for them to all of a sudden drop it and Mm. admit, you know, the areas that they've been wrong, or it can be very difficult for them to not see you as their child. I think there's something about parenthood and going through that journey with your child that it would be very, very difficult for you to let that dynamic go. Even in the stage of you can be 25, 26, 30, 40, you will always be somebody's child. And I think actually being respective of that and coming from a place of love and appreciation for the fact that you might have somebody that is a carer that sees you in that way, I think is really, really important and really helpful. And that actually really helps me, like really reframing some of the things that, you know, my mom may have done to Mm. annoy me or frustrate me or upset me as a, you're probably coming at this from the perspective of being a parent as opposed to somebody that's actively trying to to harm me or maim me. Or this may be a result of, again, I don't want to make like excuses of whatever, but again, that understanding, this action or reaction or the way that you have behaved is a direct result of some of the traumas that you have experienced in your life so i would definitely say try and approach the restoration of that relationship with love care and empathy Mm. for your parents as human beings Mm -hmm. and not just as parents or like caregivers but actually humans and i think what's beautiful about getting older is you actually see the humanity in your parents you see oh this person you're wrong yeah. you were dead wrong but you know what you were dead wrong because you were human yeah. and you were never perfect so actually giving your parents a bit of a pass there have been times where i've told both my parents i don't know if the decision that you made here was the smartest mm. one with all, all due respect it wasn't like oh i thought that was dumb because you know <laughs> parents yeah, pop yeah, off yeah, but it is you know having those frank conversations and thinking you know what i don't agree with the decision that you made here but i see your heart yeah and i see that the heart that you have towards me is not one that's always you know couched in dislike or hate but actually couched in love yeah so i think that's also really really important i love what you were saying about time these things will not change overnight Mm-mm. you will not have a perfect relationship Mm-mm. with your parents Mm-mm. overnight i promise you you will start on day one and you'll you might even take a couple of years for you to really feel as though you are friends with your parents or your parents are on board. It may take a couple of different dynamics, a different experimenting. I know for me, like moving out and actually having distance, I know that's a privilege for a lot of people, but actually having distance from my parents allowed me to deal with a lot of the things that I needed to deal with and my parents to deal with a lot of the things they needed to deal with very similarly to you. So that when we did come together, we had a lot more understanding. We had a lot more love and those conversations were a lot more productive. So I would very much encourage you to not feel as though this is something that will happen overnight. For some of you, it may be just a conversation that is needed. But for others, for the majority of you, especially if you don't have necessarily a positive relationship with your mother, it may actually take some time and a lot of unearthing before you can broach the subject or um, touch on particularly hurtful things. Mm -hmm. I think I would also encourage you to dwell on some of the positives as well. I think when we're thinking about like, you know, repairing relationships, we often forget about the positive things that Mm -hmm. may have, you know, happened over the span of your relationship as mother and daughter. I think the saying is something like, you know, bad things we write 
in stone, but good things are often written in sand. What would happen if the reverse were true? Yeah. So really dwelling beyond the famous, I carried you for nine months and I gave you clothes and shelter and all that stuff. Yes, Ma, we, we love you. We yeah. thank you. And mothers that are listening, we know that it's not easy to yeah. make sure that these things um, are available for your children. But beyond the you know, the, the provisions. provisions, right. Beyond the provisions, were there any positive moments that you had with your mom? Were there some positive affirmations that she's giving you? Were there certain moments that you shared together? And if these don't exist, maybe you can start to create them. Yeah. It might look like going with your mother to lunch. It might look like spending more time with your mom. I remember one of my favorite memories with my mom is whenever she does my hair, mm. she always tells me stories because it's such an extended period of time. Mm. And you already know the process of doing someone's hair is such an intimate, you know, not everybody's mom can do hair. So mm. shout, <laughs> don't be putting pressure yeah. on your mom to do her hair. But, you know, when I was younger, my mom would tell me stories about her past and tell me stories of who was, you know, Auntie Carol back in the day. I found mm -hmm. out my mom was climbing trees mm -hmm. as a kid. I was like, mommy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she was like, yeah, I used to, back in Nigeria, I used to swim in the ocean. Mm -hmm. She was telling me all sorts of gist. <laughs> and even now there are times where, you know, I'll be doing my own hair, but I will go home and get my mom to still do my hair just so that we can share that experience. Yeah. So finding those moments or curating those moments where you can dwell on the positives, you can create positive memories with that person, mm -hmm. with that, you, you know, with your mother is really, really important for restoration and reparation because then you can dwell on the positives as opposed to the negatives yeah. and you can start rewriting the story between you and your mother necessary and then in terms of um intimacy not all relationships with your like your mothers have to be super intimate yeah. right it is very much based on where you're at with your mother and where you're at in your life for some people restoration and reparation looks like a very close intimate relationship with your mother for others it looks like you know at least we can get on at family meetings mm -hmm. and making your peace with that mm -hmm. because it's not everybody even your mother sometimes it's not everybody that you'll be able to get to that stage too so making your peace with whatever stage or whatever restoration looks like for you yeah. is very very important and not hurrying the process because you want to get to stage d when you haven't even gotten to stage a mm -hmm. um and yeah i love what you were saying around like thinking about the bigger picture yeah. right having to bury the hatchet so that you can build a better future yeah. for grandkids for um your family in general because nobody wants to have to build on top of a broken foundation exactly. so really exactly. taking the steps to build that foundation rebuild it rather um before you add anything on top is necessary. what i would say necessary yeah good question though great question another in fact another question taking it left field mm. completely left field mm -hmm age gap relationships yeah so we have been part and parcel to a whole bunch of celebrity relationships online yeah, yeah, yeah. we have seen uh, a whole host of different interactions between various parties mm -hmm. and one conversation that keeps on going round and round on the internet is that of the age gap relationship mm -hmm. so it may be you know a heterosexual we're being very heteronormative here by mm -hmm. the way but again this can exist in you know homosexual relationships mm -hmm. and all others but particularly within the heterosexual relationships where we see older men yeah. with much younger women yeah. and that always seems to cause quite a bit of an uproar or yeah. conversations around a whole bunch of things such as is this predatory in nature mm. should you know older people who are you know in their 30s 40s even 50s be dating people that are in their early 20s mm. those kind of conversations and one of the questions that we actually got was what are our thoughts on age gap relationships, relationships. i think it depends on both of your stage of maturity right. number one but number two realize that it does make it easier for there to be an imbalance of power, yep. an abuse of power, potentially um, some kind of manipulation or control. Now, I always used to be the girl who's like, I just am so mature. I need to date an older man, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. But I do think it's important for us to recognize where is that stemming from? What do you think being in a relationship with a significantly older man will provide for you? Yep. Is it that you think, oh, that's the only way I can get stability. They're the ones who are mature, blah, blah, blah. I think you need to take these things on a case by case basis. Because mm -hmm. sometimes, especially if a man only exclusively dates 
younger women, significantly younger women, like the 10 years plus younger. Yeah. It can sometimes be because they perceive it as an opportunity to control, an opportunity to mold and yeah. influence, an opportunity to kind of like just have uphold some kind of power that is I am older than you. Maybe I make significantly more money than you. Mm-hmm. Um, I say I have this maturity that you do not have. I mean, I think you need to question where does that leave you in the mm. relationship? How much power does that leave you with? At the end of the day, somebody being 10 years older than you when you are 50 and they are 60 may not even be that much of a problem. Mm. But if you are 20 and they are 30, you have a decade of life experience that's different. Yeah. Not just age, not just time, but actual experiences. Mm. They're probably, they've probably experienced career they've ex- maybe experienced dating several people you haven't baby girl you're still in school yeah or maybe you've only just got your first job mm. you don't know what the big big world is like like that you know and so it's just important to think like how much experience are you bringing into the relationship as well as right. much as you may think oh i have all this maturity but do you have experience mm-hmm. do you have well-rounded experience which lets you know how to handle different people in different situations so i would not I wouldn't be like, don't you dare date someone who's 10, 15 years older than you. You know what, yeah. baby girl, make what happens, happens for you. Now, if somebody is 60, they're dating somebody who's 20 something. Let's be real. Be don't freaking be for real. Don't be silly. However, um, I w- I'm not going to say who you should or should not date. But I will say if you are significantly younger than your partner, mm-hmm. have people around you who are of similar age to your partner who can give you advice on your relationship from an unbiased but also mature place. Yeah. Make sure that you are dating in community and you let people know like... Does he have accountability, for example, who you feel comfortable going to talk to? If your man's friends are also all significantly older than you, you may feel like, who am I? I kind of feel like, you know, that little small girl Mm. who's going to call them and be like, can you pull up your boy on this? But has he done well to bring you into a community or are you completely isolated and siloed and kept out of the rest of his world? So I think there are certain things you now need to become more observant of Mm. in your relationship to make sure that your health relationship is healthy and it has the same safeguards to remain healthy so are you a part of his community Mm -hmm. have you met his family have you got people who are in your life and his life who you can talk to about your relationship about things that are going on have you got a third party for example I would say that's a great um, time to bring in counseling from quite early yeah and I know some people are quite averse to like marriage counseling no people should stay out of our business but I do think you need a third party Mm -hmm. Um, very objective person who is like going to help you interpret each other and understand each other better. And I think if this person really does care for you, Mm. this is something you should invest in. And if you care for the success of the relationship, it should be something that you invest in too. Mm -hmm. So I am a little bit skeptical about them, but it's not to say they do not work at all. Mm -hmm. I think you just have to be vigilant. I think you need to know what you are signing up for. Then again, as we say with most relationship advice on this podcast, Mm. you need to treat that person as an individual not just an age yeah. don't think that oh because you're 35 you should act like this you should think like this there are many 35 year old men who still act like young teenage boys there are many 40 year old men who still act like young teenage boys the maturity is not in the age it's in the mindset it's mm. in the emotion it's in the experience it's mm-hmm. in the development and the wisdom that has been gained yeah. so if you are with somebody then they should understand the safeguards you are trying to put in place but you yourself going into this relationship need to realize the importance of having safeguards yeah. because if you are a young lady getting into a relationship with a significantly older man there is room for there to be more issues than the average same mm-hmm. age couple is going to face mm-hmm. so that's what i'd say be wise be vi- be wise be vigilant mm-hmm. yeah no for sure completely agree with everything that you said i think also for me when i become skeptical of age gap relationships is when they started courting as well yeah so if you're courting somebody that is significantly younger than you before the age of like consent before the age of that's called grooming if any of you guys are part and parcel of grooming then for me that is a no the relationship is a dud because you've already started with an imbalance of power power. and not just an imbalance of power but it's an illegal imbalance of power you weren't (laughs) your prefrontal no 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 no, has not been developed yet um and again it's the power imbalance right but also the efforts to manipulate and control oftentimes when folks are engaging with women that are significantly younger or even girls that are actually you know below the age of consent that to me just signals that you are actively going for people in order to manipulate and control them and mold them as you were saying and 
it's, it's a no, no dog. You need to play with people that are your own age. Ideally people that are, uh, uh, you know, above the age of consent. What are you doing with 16 year old girls? Like for me, it's mad cringe when I see folks that are significantly older, you're hanging by like you're a predator. Games. You're like, a predator. What are you doing? You are a predator. Bro- my brother, what are you Move doing? Move away from that. <laughs> that is not what we're even talking it's about. It's creepy. And I remember even growing up, there were some folks outside of our school, like old yeah, men yeah, yeah, yeah. old significantly yeah, grown older grown ass men yeah it's grooming what are it's you doing predatory. and a lot of us have been conditioned to think that that is normal it's not it's like not. it's abusive and if, if you're not careful you will start to think oh no but this is normal no, like not. this is actually good for me it's do not, not be brainwashed baby girl people know when they are taking advantage of you and often it's hard for you to see that especially if there is something that you think you're gaining from this whether it be money whether it be the protection it. whether it's the clout whatever it is especially if you're a young girl listening to this actually let's put this right yeah. here yeah. if you are below i think age of consent in the yeah, uk is yeah. 18 if you are below 18 I think in the States is 21. But if you're below 18 and you are dating a man who is an adult. <laughs> now, don't tell me the nonsense of, but I'm 17, he's 19. He's an adult. You're a minor. I'm not going to call you a child. I know saying, you want to be a, res- a respectable. You're a woman. You're genuinely, grown. You wear frontals, whatever. Um, you're a minor. He's an adult. He can wait. If he loves you that much, if he likes you that much, he can wait, No. Ah, uh, what's a couple years? Listen, what's the eighteenth birthday? Look, bash? I just want to let you know it, it, it is illegal and it's it is illegal. called statutory rape. Rape, but, well, that's if you're having sex. Yeah, but even if you're just dating, no, he can wait. You can wait. Date people your age for now, okay? And if you're like, oh no, but he's grown, he's really mature. Oh, get out of here, da, 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 da. Then if he's really mature, he can wait. Mature people can wait for things. And you know what? This is the thing because folks be looking at external relationships or like relationships online i think it's just the exposure that a lot of young girls have to grown ass relationships yeah. and start to think oh me too i can do grown relationship mm-hmm. baby you don't need mm-hmm. that you don't need this in your and life that's the other thing stop trying to rush it and make it happen you have all your life to have grown relationships oh. baby have school girl relationships do you know what now. i mean have that school girl romance you can even have a cheeky boyfriend just make sure I he's need, also a minor there we go i need him to be sending those like little notes that he tore out of his um, school <laughs> notebook and he had to say could you pass this to x and x <laughs> no but even if the love the relationship if you want to be dior do you want to whatever but make sure that he's 17 fact, now if he's also 17 like you he's that, doing fraud that, let me tell you dior, i just want to let you that, know leave that it's dior. fake or he's Stop doing it. fraud that but dior. at least it's not right let at him least get it's... you earrings from claire's <laughs> dior but no what we're essentially what we are saying is for any young girl listening to this who is below the age of 18 Leave that grown man alone 100%. and tell him your online sister said he has to leave you alone because what he's doing is called being a predator. He is predator. Okay. Predatory if he behavior. wants you, he can wait. Don't let him pressure you into anything and you yourself don't go running headfirst into anything because you think it's glitz and glamour. Those girls who were in our school who were dating older men, obviously love them to pieces. Those are our sisters. No shame. However, a lot of them now will tell you, I wish I had not. Listen. I wish I had not. Do you get what I mean? A lot of them now will tell you, I wish I had not. And so just be very, very careful. Do not awaken love before it's time. Do not do things um, which are not in your best interest. Protect yourself. And if you are going to date somebody, make your parents aware. I know we all want to do low-key, low-key, but there are a reason why you have guardians to guard you. And you men that are doing, uh, can can I get something outside of school gates? You must leave. <laughs> you actually must leave. I don't know why you're- Have some self-respect. If fam, if you're dating a babe and you yourself, you're a grown man and you have to wait for her to finish from the school gates before you can take her out. I want you to can really Can you not consider, get women your own age? Exactly. I really want you to consider if this is what you want right now. Oh. Okay. I don't, chasing girls- wearing uh, the checkered skirt going to school year 10 year 11 why are you doing this are you it's perverse it's not nice it's perverse Ew. get out of here you but absolute equally, clown. Stop, it, stop it but also just to shed light on the fact Remember. that it can also happen in reverse yes okay yes, so yes, and i yes. know that it's it's a sensitive topic because i think within society we often see younger men with older women yeah. and think oh my gosh like he's the he's man got it. you know what i mean where as there are actually a lot of men that have had some perverse sexual yeah, relationships with with women groomed. exactly have that have been groomed y'all gotta stop that too Mm-mm-mm. it's not good Mm-mm-mm. okay it's not it's not 
Mm-mm. It's not cute. Mm-mm. It's not nice. Mm-mm. It's called Mm-mm. grooming, mm-hmm. especially if they're also below the age, you know the age of consent. consent. That is also called statutory it's called grooming. Rape. It's called taking advantage. Stop and honestly, it. you need to face the demons of dating people around <sighs> your same age. All right, listen, creepy, and all of the narratives that we even have in public in general, floating in the red pill sphere somewhere around. Oh, the younger she is, the better. Predatory. It is predatory. It's not nice. It's not cute. You're looking for someone to control. Grow some balls. It's not good. And go find somebody within your, your age range. You should you should yeah. stop. Or just wait till they are of the age where they can make critical critically thought out. And if they still like you. Well considered decisions and see if they still want you. It's just ugh. Anyway, it's maybe because you know if you were to approach somebody whose frontal lobe is fully developed, they'll <laughs> they tell will you know no. that you're not the right they'll one. They'll tell you no. <laughs> <laughs> Cradle Snapchat. Go back home. Don't be stupid. <laughs> oh, not the Cradle Snapchat. Don't kill me. Do you know how funny that is? Whew. Back to something a bit more wholesome. Yeah. Advice for sisters transitioning from their 20s to 30s without reaching societal milestones mm. like marriage, kids, and owning a house. Mm, mm, mm. And I think a very similar um, question, which is how do you deal with the feeling of being too late in life, even though you're young? Ah, you pressure, know what pressure, we need to pressure, do? Pressure, we need pressure. to um, decline. <laughs> Project it. The spirit of my age mates are doing this, my age mates are doing that, Pressure. number one. And the thought that 30 years old. Ah, guys, that guys, is young, you Yeah, know. young, you know. We, let's go back to a couple of episodes, um, <laughs> episodes ago. Do you remember when I went to the nursing home? The people I saw, jeez, I thought, this is 60, 70 years into the future. Because those people were not less That's than 90. I'll <laughs> tell you that now. And then it made me really think. I still have you the have majority years. You of have my years. life ahead of me, years, by man. God's grace. It's a scam, I'm telling you. And so stop thinking that by 30, suddenly the clock is started ticking and Listen. the Grim Reaper is standing somewhere like, yes. whenever you're ready, shut up. This Listen. is not when, um, what, the, what were them diseases that used to take people when they were 14? Like cholera. The cholera and, uh, and ty- what is it? not typhoid. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the plague. The plague. Do you know what I mean? We are not living in those times. The, the way the plague rinsed people. Uh, Lifespan of 13 years. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine living in a time where the average lifespan is 13. Oh, if if I... you make it to 14, you're even old. No storm. Jesus, thank God for modern medicine. As... <laughs> <laughs> thank God for modern medicine. Nah, the way that took people out was serious. Crazy. So we're not living in those times. <laughs> we give God glory. To live, to live to to 70 80 90 Glory. you know it's the grace of god but it's doable Listen. you know and so stop thinking that 30 is suddenly oh my god what will i ever do with my Listen. life uh-uh. and expose yourself now to stories of people who are in their 30s 40s who are making things Listen. happen experiencing things for the first time it's okay representation will really do a lot but also I understand that feeling of, but it would have been nice to, yeah. it would have been nice to be married by now. It would have been nice to have my person, to have my kids, to have my house, to whatever it is you think you should have ex- achieved by this mm. time. Um, however, nothing's stopping you from still attaining those things. Right. Number one. Number two, you still have time to achieve, achieve those things. And number three, those things do not define you as a person right still cultivate joy still cultivate friendship and community Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and appreciation around you even in the absence of those things but be actively working towards it because it may not happen now but it will happen at some point do you get what i mean and that's fine we wait for that day to come Mm -hmm. and but it's not until that day comes that we will wait to celebrate ourselves celebrate yourself now right. celebrate every milestone every achievement kill it in other areas of your life whilst you are still preparing and walking towards that um because the one thing you should not do is le- lose years of your life ah prime youth years mm. yeah in disappointment embarrassment and feeling like you haven't achieved anything yeah that's what will actually make you lose your youth um, more than anything else. 100%. And baby girl, enjoy life right now and Listen. take things one step at a time. Stop thinking that time is running out. Slow down. Take every day as it comes. 
enjoy your life and make pockets of joy but slow it all the way down okay yeah yeah it doesn't make you a failure man take every day as, as it, it comes. comes you live every oh single day gosh. and you don't want to live every single day despising yourself yeah. these are called societal expectations for a reason they are what society expects of you but not what you should expect of you you need to define what you would like and as courtney said you can aspire to these things they're not out of reach they're not oh my gosh it's never gonna happen to me they very well could happen to you tomorrow Easily. next year in the next three years like whatever just because it hasn't happened right now doesn't mean that it will never happen yeah. so it actually takes solace in the fact that you know these things are not out of reach for me and i think whilst there are some you know oh biological realities yeah, yeah. of you know late 20s early 30s all that kind of stuff everything happens according to your own timeline i think someone who actually spoke to this really well is um tony tone yeah um shout out to tony tone came to the live show she she dropped some gems she really did but i think what she does really well is really show that you can have a life after 30 i don't know when this whole narrative nonsense of life finishes at 30 i know Mm. uh, there are some 30 year olds that are living there but you know what it comes from the fact that again when lifespans were less no let's be real no let's do the maths let's do the maths and i think it was gary v who yeah. made a video about yeah, this yeah. that really changed my perspective which was when we were living in times where literally 60 was the average age people oh, were 30, dying got, by 30 of course you need your life to be sorted out but 30 is now one third of, of a lifespan life. yeah, do you get what i mean insane. it's not one half and so allow ourselves to also then put these things into perspective and yes like you said there are biological realities and you know you guys know on this podcast we're not going to lie to you we're not going to tickle your ears with fancy things Mm. there are biological realities but even the biological realities don't end at 35 exactly there are many women who have had kids in their early 40s 37 40 do you get what i mean so also let's be guided and also we're living in a world where if there are options, if you are 30 something and you're like, I haven't had my kids yet, start looking to freeze your eggs. Okay. Like, let's be measured and guided about the things that we are doing right now. There are options for you. So don't work with me if, uh, if I don't have a baby. Natural contraception. No house, con- um, marriage, conception. Yeah, do, 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 do you know what I mean? I'm never going to have it. Start preparing for it. Still put that house deposit away. Mm-hmm. Still um, get your, st- start planning your wedding from now. I am in the phase of my life of delusional faith. <laughs> What God cannot do does Listen, not exist. just because you guys have not seen it doesn't mean that it, it, it hasn't happen. happened. This is what faith is. Do you get why? It's the simple evidence. of the things that we haven't seen, but we've seen it in our hearts. Hallelujah. And so allow yourself, start paying for that, um, getting your eggs frozen mm-hmm. or taking care of your health, priming yourself for that moment. Because what you don't want is now the opportunity comes and you're not ready. Exactly. Because you let go of hope a long time ago. Exactly. Don't let your angel come and you're not there at exactly. your at your post. Exactly. Like, chill. It's actually okay. But I know that it's also hard. It's to, very hard. It's hard, especially if you are surrounded by people that are achieving some of these milestones that you really want. Be present and actually celebrate them. There'll be the same people that will come and celebrate you when you're you know, achieving percent. your milestones. Such a good point. And life doesn't automatically become better when you've achieved your milestones. Yeah. That every single milestone comes with responsibility. responsibility. The house. Yeah, you bought the house, but now you have to keep up with the mortgage payments and the responsibility of owning and maintaining a house. Yes, you found the person that you want to get married to and you know start start a family with and have kids but you also have to put in work to maintain that marriage and maintain that relationship and now there's somebody that's in your house full time are you ready to deal with that Mm. some of y'all be talking about i want my partner but you only want them part time part time it makes me think of i think it was whoopi goldberg and people are asking her how come have you you've not gotten married like how do you feel about that she said i feel fine i don't want a man in my house (laughs) and you know what (laughs) you know what I Fair hear enough. it. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Like there are real practical realities yeah, of getting yeah, married that yeah. you need to think about and contend with, deal with. You'll be with this guy full time yeah. in your house or even having kids. There is a big responsibility attached to creating Ooh. a life for kids. It's not just about the validation or satisfaction of having a kid that you should have a kid, yeah. right? Not genuinely, not everybody who's actually fit to be a parent yeah and that's okay if that's not you that's okay if it is you don't be upset that it hasn't happened just yet because again there's a responsibility and the maturity that's required for you to maintain that so there is that you know that maintenance but also 
society doesn't just put expectations around milestones. There's also a sequencing in their expectations. Yes, yes, so once yes, you get yes, the house, yes. it's where's the guy? Yeah. Once you get the guy, where's the kids? Once you've had the first kid, where's the, yeah, the next? There's kid? always something. There's always something. The goalpost is always shifting. So sometimes it's just about celebrating each goal when it comes, it comes. before fixing your eye and shining yeah. your eye on and something tell else. To mind their business. This is it. Tell there will be wound watchers. There will be bank watchers. Everybody is watching. Yeah. People will always be watching. They should close their eyes <sighs> and face their front mm. and the business that pays them because mm. your business does not pay yeah. them. And at least if they are going to watch, give them a good show. 100%. And that show doesn't have to look like the house of kids. That show can just look like, I am so happy. 100%. I'm so sorry. I thought maybe you maybe thought that when you looked over here, you would have seen somebody who was mourning, grieving and feeling <sighs> like they had lost stuff. Mm -mm. Do you know what I... I'm living it up. I personally dislike is those people that will come and shame you and come to look for you to be upset, upset. because you're single, yeah, exactly. because you're... Oh, uh -huh. and I if don't you, want kids. If you uh -huh. see the demons that manifest when you tell them, actually, I'm so happy. They're like, no, you're delusional. No, you're delusional. <laughs> <laughs> Guess we're on the same side. You're then. Delusional, Aye. sweetie. Aye. You'll say, "Oh, I actually don't want kids right now." Why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why but are you not upset? Overall, sis, like thirty is actually young. Thirty is young. You Let's, have time. You got time. Oh, it's almost the new year. Jump skirt. Mm -hmm. What is your prayer for 2024? What is my prayer for 2024? Um, boy, I have so many like small ones. Mm. You know what? I actually think my overall prayer is going to sound really deep. And like, mm. I think Aww. over the course started already. Teardrop slided that wall. Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> I think over the last episode, you guys know I'm really getting serious about my faith. And my overall prayer is that just through everything, God will just make me more like him. Mm. And that like, I'll actually fulfill my purpose. Awesome. Like I really want to just be impactful in the world. And this year was, oh, guys, when I say blessings, Jesus, Glory be. it is only God. The blessings of 2023. Serious. I could never have imagined that this would be my life my career mm -hmm. whatever and now i'm just like god like just use it all for your glory and i've kind of realized now that like life is full of so many highs and lows mm. and even in the low points there's still so much value mm -hmm. to be taken out of it when you just want to become more like christ and mm. like have his heart formed in you so right now i'm just like god even in the good the bad mm. with everything i'm doing just be glorified, man, mm. in every way. So that's my overall prayer. Because I feel like that's what causes you to live a really beautiful life. Yeah. Like, I think even when people ask me, like, oh my God, you're so inspirational. How did that happen? I just want to glorify God, man. I don't know what else oh, to tell Courtney. you. Oh, Courtney. That's yeah, so Yeah, awesome. it's quite deep. But like, the more I've been thinking about it, the more I'm just like, I have my goals, don't get me wrong. But I'm mm. like, God, like, there was something someone said, mm. which was like, think about the consequences of your success mm. and like, mm. will it actually produce in you what you actually need to mm -hmm. be produced mm -hmm. in you? Mm -hmm. And I was just like, you know what? I want the consequence of anything that happens to me, good or bad, yeah. to be the glorification of God. That's beautiful. And the evidence of his goodness in my life. That's beautiful. So yeah, babes, what about you? Oh, that's beautiful. Before Just we get to me, that actually reminds me of a conversation that I had with a friend recently. And we were talking about like success and the consequence of success, funnily enough. And he was like, I often ask myself, would I like what kind of person I would I would be at this level yeah, of success yeah. as a means of checking myself yeah so if I was to make you know one million where would I allocate the funds yeah. and he went into so much details talking about I want to do this this that and he does it as a heart check mm. to see am I the kind of person am I producing the kind of things that I want to produce but is it also producing in me the kind of person I want to be in the exactly. world and I was like that's such a beautiful way of thinking exactly of things. yeah yeah who my prayer for 2024 I think similarly to you, 2023 has been a phenomenal, phenomenal year. We it's have seen crazy. things, the it's highest crazy. of highs, but also some of the lows. But I think what's been beautiful about the lows is what it's produced yeah, in, yeah. in me. Like, child, <laughs> you see a lot of things in your time and it can have the opposite effect, yes, right? It exactly. can completely, you know, change you up or, you know, keep you in places that you don't want to be. Mm. So I think for me, 2024... I think for me, I would really pray that I continue to grow in my heart for 
like the things that we do for yeah. women in particular. Yeah. I think what I've been so privileged to have across 2023 is such access to like women's stories yeah. and women's hearts in both intimate settings, but also in quite large, large settings. Yeah. And I would really just pray that God really keeps my heart for women yeah. and really grows my heart and really grows Necessary. my capacity to actually hold space for women too. Mm. Because I think even amidst the like great stuff that you can do over the span of your life and stuff, it's actually holding space when the successes do come that mm. can be tricky. You're so absorbed in like doing that you forget that within the house you actually need to hold space for people. Yeah. So I think my like one of at least one of my biggest prayers for 2024 is I really want my heart to grow for women, yeah, but I also good. want God to keep space for women too. Yeah. Like I really want them to be a priority both in like my personal life, but also in my public life. I don't yeah. want to be that person that's like shouting about, oh, I really care about these things in the world. But then internally within my own personal relationships, I don't hold space yeah, for people. that's good. So I think, yeah, God keep my heart because as we continue to go further and further, both with like TMS, but just in life in yeah. general, you yeah. get exposed to the heights of you know evil mm. and the heights of systems mm, that mm, need to mm, be torn mm, down mm, 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 mm. and the heights of people that need to be thrown in it's jail a lot. it's a lot <laughs> it's a lot man it's a lot so yeah god really continued to open up and free up my time my provisions everything just yeah. to have heart for the people that he's it's called good. me to like, this really really good prayer. really really good wholesome stuff man very on to the next one yeah how do you find joy in life after a season of exerting yourself to achieve your goals hmm is this before or after the goal is achieved mm, that's or a good the chill, question the goal is not achieved i'll answer both if the goal has been achieved celebrate the heck out celebrate of that boy um like literally like really come. make it a big deal to like celebrate and um commemorate that moment like boy go out buy yourself something nice spend time with your friends pop open a bottle of something like pop whatever it is really give thanks and like be grateful for the success and soak that up for a for a good period of time mm. um just so that you don't forget i think that brings an immense amount of joy if it has not worked out the way you wanted it to mm. be grateful for the process number one and number two be optimistic about the fact that you can always go again you can mm. always do something new and I think that excitement can also bring joy as well um and surround yourself with people who will bring joy to your life like will through celebrating you or through bringing moments of joy through humor and company yep. um don't isolate your times in moments of, don't isolate yourself in moments of victory or in times of victory or, or even failure. Be around people who truly do bring you joy through their presence. Mm. Um, and I think that's a big one for me that keeps me very joyful in almost all situations. Yep. I've been through some really rocky things as of late and having people around me who have even in the midst of my tears made me laugh or made me like cackle or just be like you're so dumb for even saying that but it's brought me joy in yeah. that moment it has genuinely reminded me that Courtney you're not dead this thing can be overcome and you've got such great people around you right yeah. so I think it's it's important to keep people around you who bring you joy um but also remind yourself that in all moments you can actually find joy even in times of sorrow I think mm. there can be joy found sometimes you have to dig really really deep um and sometimes you need to just allow yourself to feel the pain feel the failure and move on into a new season of well you know what i'm going to intentionally cultivate gratitude cultivate joy because it can be a constant state right joy isn't fleeting it isn't around like happenings it's something i learned from my mentor where i was like oh sometimes i just don't feel happy and he was like yeah because ha being happy depends on things happening mm. and if things aren't happening you're not going to be happy but if you're joyful it's something that you can cultivate from within you stemming from gratitude like yeah. actual gratefulness and so just be try to i say just just is always a word i throw around which is terrible but like be grateful mm. learn to be grateful in all things in all circumstances learn to be grateful to give thanks mm. for whatever is in your life the success the failures the sorrow the tears whatever it is learn to be grateful and i think that gratitude mm -hmm. 
as much as it's a word that's thrown around a lot, is literally a dimension shifting principle. Like mm. no matter where my headspace is, if I can find even one thing to focus on and just say, you know what, I'm so thankful for this. Mm. It can help me realize that no season is ever wasted. Yeah. And I think that's sometimes why we lose joy. We feel like our time is being wasted. Our efforts have been wasted. There's no reason to be joyful, but nothing is ever wasted. Mm. So remember that hopefully that helps yeah Yeah. that's beautiful man definitely agreed gratitude is such a big thing and i really do hope that as many of us are coming towards the end of 2024 gratitude is one of the overwhelming emotions and practices that we actually adhere to because it's so easy for you to dwell on the negatives that you forget to be grateful even the basic stuff you're breathing that be child it means something it means something it means that god isn't done with you yet so definitely would would echo that point on cultivating joy and being grateful and using it as a practice in your day-to-day to to really help you with you know that post period yeah man i would say rest man Mm. i think there's so much pressure to stay in the state of exertion but it's not in the exertion that you grow it's actually in the rest period that you grow it's the same with like our physical like bodies and stuff when you exercise the growth and the um, strength comes from the resting period and not from the period of exertion so actually scheduling some time to rest and recuperate you've been do it whether you have achieved your goal or not you have been working hard mm-hmm. and sometimes it can be so tempting to stay in that hamster wheel because we think that the exertion will always result in the results and sometimes it's the rest that you know results in the result mm-hmm. that we want so scheduling some time to rest take a break especially as a lot of companies organizations people are coming to a point in their cycles where they can actually rest they're taking their holidays holidays take advantage of the fact that you can slow down too Mm -hmm. it's okay to slow down it's necessary to slow down and it's a beautiful thing to slow down spend some time with as you were saying people that bring you life people that can actually speak into you people that you know energize you Mm. spend more time prioritize spending time with them but also prioritize spending time with yourself check in with yourself how are you doing after this period of exerting yourself do you think things went well for you do you think that this is true and authentic to the way that you want to continue exerting yourself next year i think even if we've achieved our goals sometimes we can come to a place of we didn't like the process through which we had to go through in order to get that. So you may have had a positive result, but you've had to go through a very negative process. Mm -hmm. You might want to reflect and think about ways that you can make that and spin it so that it's a lot more positive. Vice versa. You may have exerted yourself in a way that was really great and you really enjoyed it. You may not have gotten the results that you wanted, but is there a case for you to go again and try again in that same way in the next year? So really rest process. Think about, the process that you went through is that true to the way that you actually want to continue with things whether it is in your career in your relationships whatever sphere it is or is you know are there some places that you can tweak it a little bit but definite emphasis is on that rest recover it's okay slow down man chill out do things that you enjoy as well like things that don't require active effort or active energy things that restore things that bring back your energy because life life is always going to go in ebbs and flows yeah. there will be times where you know you'll be required to have a high output and in the times where you don't have to be putting out so much slow down and get your energy back yeah. so that when the pendulum swings to the opposite side and you're required to increase your output to a higher level you will actually have the energy to do so and this is how you actually avoid burnout mm-hmm. get yourself in a place where you will actually be ready to deal with the next bout of high output yeah. by respecting and honoring your time of low output Good. rest man rest. watch the netflix shows Necessary. i'm speaking to myself man watch the netflix shows go out to eat if you want in fact stay in to eat take get yeah, the takeout you want relax do put the face masks to. on go just in with your friends mm-hmm. you know do the things that bring you energy whatever that looks like yeah i think we have time for maybe one more yeah Ooh maybe two more where's courtney's outfits from my outfits mm-hmm. oh my god oh this is from the live show yeah, this one's from my the live dress show. was from oh it wasn't even a dress sorry people were asking where's my dress from it's mm. not it wasn't a dress it was a two-piece two-piece baby so it was um it's a two-piece from pretty lavish one of my favorite places to go mm-hmm. for knitwear um they just have such high quality 
pieces for like an affordable price yeah. and such an amazing brand. Some of their pieces are available on ASOS, but then they also have their own dedicated website. Um, they have a really nice curve range, like of plus size clothing. You should sponsor which Courtney. Is just, yeah, you really should. Cause I just made a very, very large order from you guys. <laughs> <laughs> a very large order on Black Friday. I can't lie. So yeah, a lot of my outfits, um, yeah, are from like ASOS, Pretty Lavish. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, those are like my go-to at the moment. I love me a bit of River Island. River Island has one of the best plus size ranges. Okay. Um, because the quality, I think with plus size clothing, let's get into it. Mm-hmm. With plus size clothing, sometimes you have to compromise on the quality. And I think yeah. that's general, in general with clothes these days, you don't get that quality. And like, like when I say quality, I'm talking about like, you know when our parents used to buy things from m and Yeah. Marks and Spencers and it's like, Doris it's quality I'm like, nah, I'm like, like mns john lewis like yeah that's the those piece. like heavy ones do you get what i mean like that's what i mean i cleared out my entire wardrobe the other day because i just wanted a fresh capsule wardrobe and mm. i think you can get really caught up in like just having pieces but you don't know how to put the outfits together mm. etc so your girl's kind of becoming a fashion girl or whatever. You but yeah like um investing in the pieces from pretty lavish was nice that's where my my um brown co-ward on the live show day was from on, no. um but yeah i just liked having pieces that feel nice mm-hmm. and not not just look nice like i really love investing in those piece, pieces that feel nice check and yeah out. sustainable so fashion thank girly. you yes i'm trying my best check so now out. all of my clothes fit on a rail and that's it those check are you. all of my wow. clothes all of my clothes fit on a rail summer clothes and winter included Courtney is that you it is nah guys I'm actually so proud of Courtney Courtney was that babe the ASOS orders that would be coming in <laughs> remember uni time yeah, so, yeah, yeah I'm just yeah. gonna go to the porters to pick up you know <laughs> my ASOS clothes. parcel yeah but you know what I kind of don't despise I do because I wish I could get the money back <laughs> but like I don't despise it because I I think in time my style has evolved and I found it like yeah. through trial and error it was a lot of trial and boy a lot of error but um I've loved it. And yeah. I really like the way I dress now. I love that. Like you, I man. really, even this last week I was reflecting on it. I was like, it's every outfit has been a banger. Good fit. Yeah. I even the that. casual ones. It's mm-hmm. just, look at the, myself in the room. And I'm like, mm, I look, who is she? I look good. Who is she? You want to look good. I'm put together. Yeah. So yeah, that's where my outfits are from. But if you would like more fashion content, like me there, because I'd like the sponsorships. Exactly. <laughs> exactly you yeah. guys ain't gonna get fashion content from me i'm just gonna troll you <laughs> i would just troll you in terms of legs routine guys just go to the gym that is oh wait no say. were they what, what was the full question because i think i saw that it was what is your body routine because your legs look amazing yeah that in terms of like the skincare the body oh. care yeah because i looked at a picture i was like our legs were really glistening, nice, glistening. our legs are really lis- glistening at the live show body care then? routine no remember both our legs are because i had the slit and then oh, you had the short dress so yeah, both our yeah. legs were out yeah vaseline and to be fair you use vaseline on your body yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. occasionally ava estelle oh yeah ava so Estelle's recent cool. oh recently picked that up yeah ava estelle yeah. that cream just me- there, there was one moment shout out to treasure Tress, yeah. man because we went to their <laughs> pop-up and we've been doing a whole bunch of stuff and they sponsored the live yeah. show and shout out to joy as well she was yeah. the one that prepared our you boxes. know build your own boxes Wash day box. oh my gosh and part of that was actually the ava estelle um cream yeah. they have like a winter and a summer cream yeah. and that thing just smelled so good i've been in love with their winter cream since oh my gosh 2020 i want to say i literally stocked up i have like i think i'm on my last container and it smells like vanilla orange yeah. it's oh, so it's good beautiful. and yeah their summer one i picked out from the treasure Trust store as well beautiful absolutely fantastic but what was on your body on the live show day that's what i really referring. tried to think of what i thought was <laughs> genuinely on on the day i think it was cocoa butter and yeah. vaseline there that was go. it cocoa butter and palmer's another great brand that palmer's you know, is a great brand they're palmer's. actually sponsoring an event oh by the time you listen to it is it the past yeah it'll be we're doing an event in birmingham yeah uh for black girls who can't retain length yeah and yeah we're yeah. gonna be doing some hair tutorials about some all things hair, hair and growth. Growth. yeah you sponsored know. by palmer's and yeah. treasure dress yeah <laughs> Funnily enough. Yeah. So yeah, on my legs was Palmer's uh cocoa butter. Yeah. And uh you what's the name of I think it's the cocoa butter Vaseline. You know the yeah. one in the brown tin. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, doubled up on the cocoa butter man. That yeah. was me. Yeah. I think mine was one, I exfoliate with my African sponge. Every yeah, day. yeah. My skin is <laughs> yeah. very, very smooth. Anyone can tell yeah. you that I exfoliate and I have that done too. 
since birth. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So you catch up that, on your exfoliation. Um, yeah, Africa you got to do that. Sapo, yeah. the actual <laughs> sponge. The actual sponge. Yeah, that's um, good. And then Close I on. moisturize with the vitamin E intensive cream from Superdrug. The one in the tub anyway the tub the white tub right? yes yes mm-hmm. yes and it, well, it has like a cream lid and then the red label because there's a vitamin e body cream and mm-hmm. then there's the intensive I'm heavy on the she intensive. Said intensive i need that yes, moisture because you need the baby. moisture exactly and then i sealed it all in with argan oil nice yeah argan nice, oil nice, nice, nice. on my leg and that was my routine, routine. that was yeah. pretty much it man Nothing simple. Pretty just, keep it simple, man. Pretty ki- keep it pretty simple. Keep it simple. Body care. Heavy on the exfoliate, though. Yeah, boy, no, you got a scrub, necessary. baby. Scrub. It is necessary. Nah, it is necessary. Got yeah. a scrub. Because I don't shave either, so I don't get like the... you do not like grow hair on your on legs, my legs like that. No, I don't. I've it never. Must be nice, man. This I've never like grown hairs on my arms or my legs. This is all my years of growth. That is insane to me. <laughs> Literally, I ain't gonna show yeah. the cat. To be fair, you don't have bad. that much. Yeah, hair on your I don't really grow. You too have much. normal hair on your. I arm. feel like I do. To yeah. be fair, my legs as well. I don't have like I wouldn't say I'm, it's like woolly mammoth territory. <laughs> Hello, it's more like baby mammoth. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> However, one thing. Oh, good question that I have on my mind. What yeah. is one of the best like beauty related investments you've made this year? I know yours is going to be nice Oh, 110 percent, baby. <laughs> Me too. I'm even trying to get that sponsorship, child. Listen, laser hair removal. If you are a hairy queen, go get it. Yeah. Because me not having to shave my armpits and just being able to, mm. you know, dance around. Listen, yeah. I went to a worship night when I told you I was lifting my hands. <laughs> Obviously, not shaving anyone that doesn't want to, you know, yeah. shave or whatever. I was lifting my hands in yeah. worship, child. And I haven't had to shave my arm since i got it yeah like, shave my armpits yeah. and also you know the bikini line yeah <laughs> we're all good <laughs> um what has been my best beauty investment i, I wouldn't even say this year so i wouldn't even say this year mm. i think my the biggest investment <laughs> i made into my beauty was learning how to do all of it oh like yeah 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 yeah. doing my nails with like press-ons yeah, doing yeah, yeah, yeah. knowing how to do my eyebrows like doing my own braids like learning how to do my own beauty maintenance has just yeah. i do my own beauty maintenance every two weeks mm. yeah and it keeps me looking cute looking fresh but I also you get to save some I, coins because i get to save my coins exactly but it also means i pretty much always feel and look good yeah and i like that for me wow Love yeah it. i really like that for me but I, yeah i think big investments i want to make in 2024 mm-hmm. i think i want to go to the dentist a bit more often mm. like just for like proper cleans um i don't know i want to do the big girl stuff man. Yeah. <gasps> no i want to get green peels i know the girls are talking mm. about it tiktok but i really want to start doing chemical peels oh. so i have a lot of hyperpigmentation mm. come on youtube if you're listening to the audio i have a lot of hyperpigmentation when i yeah. when it's around that time in the month i get spots yeah um in these key areas of my face and on my forehead and i'm a pimple popper and so it always these dark marks mm. so as much as like i'm really happy with where my skin is i'm getting a lot more hyperpigmentation and dark marks yeah so i really want to try green pills mm. yeah but it's like wow my skin is gonna shed off yeah it's quite oh a serious gosh. thing no it's quite a serious but thing. i really want to try it because the girls That's look cool. so radiant afterwards yeah some good extractions as well yeah, that makes some sense. facials yeah that sounds good yeah talking about anything in 2024 i've always wanted to try microblading i ain't gonna lie it's on my list of that and microblading where eyebrows but you have eyebrows yeah but like my eyebrows are like i want like definition because I feel like I have the kind of eyebrows, well, to be fair, I like them because they make me look very young. Mm. But I kind of want like the je ne sais quoi. Mm. I've wanted that. And I feel like if I say I want Invisalign, you guys are going to zoom in on my team. I am screaming. No, because you know people are like that. You'll say, oh, I want X. <laughs> now they're going to so, be like looking so at my no, face. We all have insecurities, girl. To be fair, <laughs> I like my teeth, but I just think they could be straighter. Mm. So I think maybe 2024 might be the start of my, Invisalign. either that or like some kind of, because I don't feel like my teeth are like mad crooked. Absolutely not. I just kind of want the straightness. Yeah. Yeah. Got you. But I'm not going to Turkey to get veneers. So. Oh, but you don't need veneers. You don't need veneers at all. So extreme. So that extreme. That is it. The Invisalign. Have you seen it. some of those? Anyways. Like Turkey teeth. 
it's really how loud. can you call them turkey teeth because that's what it's called no, turkey stop teeth. it turkey teeth turkey teeth they look teeth like clearly done turkey. I, they look like ice cubes <laughs> a set of ice anyway sisters <laughs> We hope you love that uh, chit chat video. Yeah, we love you. We hope that you enjoyed the episode. If you do have any more questions, if you like this style of, you know, episode, let yeah. us know because we've been getting a whole bunch of questions and it seems like the sisters like the chit chatty stuff and we like the chit chatty like stuff. You know? from us, which is so nice. Oh, it's really quite cute. We really do love it. So please, please, please let us know what you thought of the episode. Do you have any other questions for us, whether they go from the deep ones to the cosmetic mm-hmm. ones to the conspiracy theory? We love those too. Please yeah. send us those questions and maybe we'll do something like this, you know, maybe once a quarter, Why once not? a month, you know, something Why like not? that. Let us know before you do all of that make sure you actually subscribe to this channel so if you're listening to this everybody that is subject to the sound of my voice at this time should go to the subscribe <laughs> button the nearest one youtube spotify what, yeah. just make sure that you are part of the to my sisters revolution for because real? we are getting ready for the 2024 of your whoop, whoop, life whoop, whoop. and make sure you follow us across all social platforms yes. at to my sisterhood yes. every necessary stuff and you can follow us individually at renee Kip- Puku and at CD Boating, and make sure you sign up to our mailing list on to my sisters dot com so right. that you can get weekly glowing and growing tips straight to your inbox. Absolutely, sisters. We hope you have a fabulous, fabulous week. Is this Christmas week? Then is it? Oh, it's the one before, right? It's the one before. Okay, next week. We hope that you have a fabulous, fabulous time. And as we are preparing for Christmas, we're sending you a Merry Christmas Merry in advance. Christmas. Don't worry, guys. As I said, please, can you post if you would like to see us wearing something for Christmas related? God bless, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Just post. Post. We might do a poll to get Courtney wearing it. Come on, let's go, guys. Anyways, other than that. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are going to be very disappointed when you realize that we I don't give it to pay pressure. Guys. We love you, guys. We love you, sisters. You have a fabulous week ahead. And as always, keep glowing and growing. Bye bye. That is so funny. <laughs> <laughs>